There's a difference between a talk and a session. A talk is like, as I said, you know, somebody's just speaking, you're watching something on YouTube, they're live, you're listening, and that's it. A session is like this, which is I'm trying to create the environment of where we're te learning from each other, right? Okay, the fiqh that he taught was the Shafi madhab. As a Muslim, who are we meant to follow? Which madhab are we meant? I mean, again, I'm not... I'm not here to astaghfirullah, you know, pinpoint any mother being wrong or right. Not never. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, hundred percent. All right, Bismillah. Let's start. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Amma bad. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Again, I think there was one person who joined later on. Um, firstly, jazakallah khair for joining. This first session, I'm hoping others will join as well. Um, I'm, 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 I'm assuming, and this is just an assumption here. <laughs> does everybody know me? <laughs> I know some of you here who have joined. I just want to make sure. Does everybody know me? If and, and oh yeah, one of the things I'm will be doing is your chat box. As I said already, I love my sessions to be interactive. Yeah, this is not a session where I'll be talking and you'll be listening. Hopefully, that's good as well um but okay please give an intro okay i've got one person that says give an intro um and the other thing i love to do alhamdulillah there's other people joining as well the other thing i would love to do and, and i hope you don't take offense to this i may pick on you <laughs> and what i mean by that is have i ask you all right you know sister Raina, who is you know can you give me an answer or sister amna can you give me an answer so i hope you don't mind that um so i'll give you a quick intro before we get into the, the, to the session itself so my name is Adil Malik, alhamdulillah. Um, I have been uh, part of Dawa for the last, I would say, 15 years now, alhamdulillah. I'm the founder and chairperson of Muslim Council of Hong Kong, alhamdulillah. We have been operating since 2006. Alhamdulillah. Okay, I'm going to mute. Um, so those who are joining, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep you on mute. Yeah. Um, if you need to speak, you can type in the chat box. So please load up your chat box. That will be our interaction, yeah? Unless you're in a quiet room um, and then I ask you a question and you want to answer, then you can turn on your mic. All right, so back to who I am. Um, I used to live in Hong Kong right now. I'm not. Can anybody tell me where I am right now? UK. Yeah, mashallah, brother Shaquille. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khair. Yes, Scotland. No, I'm actually not in Scotland. Um, I, I grew up in Scotland, so th thank you for that, Sister Rosa. I think it's Sister Syrah there, right? Um, so I grew up in Scotland, and then I moved back to uh, Hong Kong. Then I was a teacher in Hong Kong for 10 years, probably more, alhamdulillah, teaching in about three to four different Chinese schools, alhamdulillah. Um, and this is where I got my uh, teaching kind of personality. <laughs> I am Pakistani. Yes, I am. You look Pakistani. Yes, I am member of Pakistani. You. Um, I was born in Hong Kong. I grew up in Hong Kong, of course. Um, parents are Pakistani. But yeah, I am a Urdu. Alhamdulillah. And I know also Kong to was you see And of course, English as well. But yeah, I've been involved, like I said, part of Dawa for many years. I used to be one of the main guys in Hong Kong for the street Dawa. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, the street dawah is continuing in Hong Kong. I'm sure you're all part, you all see the updates and stuff like that. Um, since I moved back to England, it's not moved back, since I moved to England, I'm living in Birmingham with my family um, and trying to, you know, get settled and stuff. I've done a few of these online sessions, um, other people might know, and I thought, you know what, I want to do something regular. Um, now, this series you may know, you may know, I have done a few episodes of these while I was in Hong Kong, while I was in, Walaikum Salaam, Brother uh, Harris. Um, while I was in Hong Kong, I did a few episodes already of Imam and Nawawi's 40 Hadith. Um, but I thought, you know what, this will be a good way just to start from the beginning and then carry onwards. Yeah. So that's a quick intro. Um, but as I said already that, you know, anytime you want to ask me something, feel free. Um, I... I, uh, I I don't like a session where it's just like I said I'm talking to a talk to a wall. Yeah, I like it to be interactive. All right. I'm um, Harris Daddy. Oh, the man Jazakallah Okay. So um, the next question I want to ask you, brothers and sisters, is that can you see the PowerPoint? 
Can you see the PowerPoint? Uh, I've got loaded up. I hope you can. You can. Fantastic. Okay, so I'll go step by step, of course. Um, and if you feel I'm going too quick, you can let me know that as well. All right. Um, so before starting the series, question is, uh, for you guys. Why did you join this series? So at the moment, we've got 11 participants, alhamdulillah. Um, obviously, one including myself, I believe. So I want every single one of you, type out. Why did you join this series? Quick question. Doesn't have to be a long essay. <laughs> Just a quick one or two words, three words, four words. Why did you join the series? It wasn't to see me, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you join this series? So I want everybody to reply, please. Yeah. I want everybody to reply, please. Because look, learning is about give and take. Yeah. Uh, when you type and you're going to answer. Okay, I've got one answer. Alhamdulillah. Always wanted to learn more about Hadith. Now you got the chance. Alhamdulillah. Fantastic. Jazakallah khair, sister. I think it's sister Raina. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. We're getting more answers. Another one, I think is brother Rana. Was born Muslim, but want to learn. Islam and Hadith again. Alhamdulillah, fantastic. You're here for knowledge. Brother Shaquille, to learn and refresh my knowledge in my busy life. Very good, brother. Very good. You know, we get too busy. And just taking one hour, one hour away, it's not a big thing, is it? Um, okay, I've been wanting to understand the 40 hadiths for a time, but could never commit to a self-study because of schedule. Alhamdulillah. So Allah has chosen all of us to be part of this, to learn and know about hadith. Alhamdulillah. That's good. That's good. Uh, Sister Amna, you've put your hand up. You can just type up. After motherhood and busy on work, I wanted to reconnect with the Quran. Alhamdulillah. 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 May Allah bless you all. Um, I'll leave it. At, okay, another one. Want to learn more, want to learn about Islam, even though I'm a born Muslim, but don't know much about Islam. You know, being honest to yourself, for me, is one of the biggest things we can do, not just as a Muslim, but as a human being as well. Yeah. Uh, and all of us, what I've read so far is, you want to learn more, yeah? And that is the pinnacle of being a Muslim, seeking knowledge, seeking knowledge, yeah? Um, at times, you know, we we give this type of ibadah, and some of us even don't, don't even know this, that seeking knowledge is an act of ibadah. SubhanAllah, the first ayah that was revealed was on knowledge, right? Ikra was knowledge. It wasn't, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't tell the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to pray. He could have. He didn't say believe. He could have. But he said ikara, which means what? Seek knowledge. And the sad reality is, as you mentioned, some of you, you know, time is always against us. You know, our responsibilities, which of course, some of them, like you said, Allah Mabarak, you know, uh, motherhood, that's a responsibility. But, 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 but we don't have time to get knowledge then. You know, even though that's a big, big ibadah. So alhamdulillah, um, yesterday, at uh, one of the, the, the masjid I went to for Jumu'ah. SubhanAllah, you won't believe this. Two things I wanted to share before we... It was connected to this, this question. The topic was um, to make more of your time with less time, right? Make more of your time with less time. And I was like, that's interesting. And as he kept going, the imam, you know, kept going. And I thought, you know what, SubhanAllah, that's so true. Where he was just telling us that, look... You know, we've we've never we never ever have enough time, right? The barakah in time is always going, and we've realized that. I mean, I'm in my forty, I'm forty right now, alhamdulillah, right? But every year we feel we feel it, don't we? That you know, whoa, it's already end of August. Whoa, we're coming up to the end of 2024 already. You know, every year we're feeling, and we are feeling this, the barakah is going away like the sand and that this is this is the the, the prophecy of the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam right that time will become squeezed right the barakah will go but we need to make the most of it right we need to make the most of it uh, alhamdulillah keep sending your messages brothers and sisters uh, you're born muslim been to masjid want to know more and more about islam alhamdulillah um, get better understanding, alhamdulillah, right? Um, also, oh, okay, good good thing there, Sister Saliha. In terms of you said from a knowledgeable teacher, so I just want to make it very, very clear, my brothers and sisters, that I'm not a scholar, astaghfirullah. I'm not an imam, astaghfirullah. I'm just a brother, right? 
who has some knowledge and want to share knowledge. That's it. So I know, you know, Allah Mubarak, may Allah bless everyone. You know, some people do call me Sheikh. Some people call me Imam, Mustad. I'm none of that, brother and sisters, right? Far away from that, right? I'm just someone who's passionate about Islam, alhamdulillah, and I want to spread whatever I have because we're told as a Muslim, you know, even if you can tell someone one thing about Islam to someone, it's going to be in our book of deeds, inshallah. Yeah? Um, that's the Islam that we have. More. But even in the money, we don't have barakah, right? So there you go. So alhamdulillah, like I said, uh, oh yeah, so, so I was talking about the talk yesterday. So he said, making more of your time with less time. And he talked about it. And you won't believe the brothers and sisters. He started talking about imams. And I'll, and I'll probably get to that in a, in a bit. And I thought, you know what? What's going on here? But I'll get to that. Just a cliffhanger for you. So that's my first question. And the second question to you, brothers and sisters, is that have you attended online Islamic sessions before? Have you ever attended online Islamic sessions before? And what I mean by, I, I didn't say talk, I say session. There's a difference between a talk and a session. A talk is like, as I said, you know, somebody's just speaking, you're watching something on YouTube, they're live, you're listening, and that's it. A session is like this, which is I'm trying to create the environment of where we're learning from each other, right? 100%, I'm going to learn to something today as well, inshallah, right? That's a question here. Have you ever attended? Nope, that's fine. That's fine. And this is where I want to be honest with each other, right? You have. Alhamdulillah. I'm seeing a lot of yeses. That's fantastic. Okay, no again. Okay, fine. Alhamdulillah. No, yes, yes, no, no, yes. That's fine. But the, the reason for this question is for, for me to see what is my audience, because I don't know you well. I know some of you maybe, but not on a de de deep level, right? I want to see, are you like in the beginning, medium, you know, whatnot? Um Yes, but can't stick it till the end. Okay, alhamdulillah. So this is a very important point, actually, Sister Amna has raised. So I've called this a series, brothers and sisters. And of course, alhamdulillah, in the group that we are in, in the WhatsApp group, there's about 50 people. And I asked people, as you saw the poll, right? And the purpose behind that was for us to commit to ourselves and our Allah, Right? I wanted to make a commitment first and foremost, of course, that I can do this. So I said to my wife, I said to my family, that you know what? Saturday, 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, because right now in the UK is 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, I want to do this, right? Um, for, for me, first and foremost, you know, as Muslims, we're told to save yourselves, save yourselves and your family from the hellfire. That's the ayah of the Quran, right? So, Whenever you do something, and this is not a selfish thing, you know, we can't expect to be others to learn from us if we ourselves haven't mm -hmm. learned. Do you understand? And that makes sense, doesn't it? Um, so mm -hmm. yes, Alhamdulillah, it's good to know, as I said, that, you know, there's different type of uh, um, knowledge people here, right? But again, commit to this, please. You might not be able to attend, you know, every single mm -hmm. session, right? But I need you to attend as many as you can, please. Yeah. Um, and as I said, just keep your um, keep your um, video and your audio mute for now, um, just so that people can focus. And I just want to make sure that I'm the only one there. And this is not because I just want you to see me stuck for and all that. It's just the focus side of it. So Alhamdulillah, okay, that's done. Now, getting into the series now. Have you heard of Imam al Nawawi before? Rahimullah. Have you heard of this name before? No, you haven't. Okay, that's good. Again, everything, look, everything I'm going to say, there's goodness in that, right? There's a hadith of the Prophet wasallam that, you know, everything the Muslim does is good for him or her, right? SubhanAllah. Wondrous is the, wondrous, wonderful is the state of the believer, right? When something good happens to him, I'm paraphrasing a hadith here, when something good happens to him, what does he say? Alhamdulillah, right? When something bad happens to him, right? He is patient, right? And that is good for him. So again, everything is good for him. Okay, good. So you haven't heard. So I'm getting one no, two no, three heard of him. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Okay, fantastic. So again, this is just for us to see as well that, you know, if we don't know about our our 
our role models, you know, and the sad reality is, brothers and sisters, that we know so much of people that are not really going to benefit us in our deen and our dunya. And, and, I, and I'm one of them, you know, we know about politicians, we know about, you know, for example, uh, Steve Jobs, and we know about Cristiano Ronaldo, we know about, you know, I don't know, Modi, for example, right? But we don't know our own, you know, successors, our own giants, our own lions, our own role model at the time, right? And this is where we need to self-reflect to see why, right? We have time, and, and, and that makes you think, doesn't it? We have time to know about these guys I mentioned. But why don't we know we don't have time to learn about people like this, right? And again, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us always connect so that we learn about these giants because they have left a legacy, literally a legacy, because the word legacy is, is so loosely used now. You know, everybody's become a legend now, subhanAllah, right? But these are the legends. So inshallah, we will learn more about this man before we go into the hadith itself. Okay. Right. Uh, question number four is, what other famous imams do you know of the early Islam? Okay. What other famous imams do you know of the... I had to put in the early Islam because I don't want you to say Imam Muhammad Arshad, Mufti Arshad, we have Allah uh, I'm talking about the famous imams of the early Islams. Can I get some answers? What other famous imams do you know? Like when we think about imams in Islam, what comes to your mind? What imams comes to your mind? Okay, uh, I've got an answer. Ibn Tahmiyyah, Rahim Allah. Ibn Qayyum, Rahim Allah. Allah Mubarak, mashallah. Again, giants, giants. Anybody else that you know? Ibn Tahmiyyah, okay, he's a popular one. Allah Mubarak. May Allah raise their statuses. May Allah raise their statuses. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? We've got two so far. Ibn Tahmiyyah, uh, which was obviously Sheikh al Islam. Imam, Imam Imam Ghazali, yes, Rahimullah, Allah Mubarak. He was more towards the the spiritual side of it, the softness side of it, Allah Mubarak. Yep, definitely. Okay, cool, great. And of course, there are many, many more, um, which we won't get into. But yeah, they are there. Okay, brothers and sisters, we're gonna get into this now. Before we get into that, like with any topic, like with any talk, let's every single one of us. We've got ten people in this group right now, including myself, eleven people. Number one, let's purify our intention, right? I asked you in the beginning, number one question you can go back to, why did you join the CVs, right? Because that shows your intention. And we're going to go into the intention a bit more. But yes, let's all purify our intention, which is that number one is always, 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 we are here to seek the pleasure of Allah, right? We are here to show Allah that we want to learn more, right? We are here to increase our iman in Allah. We are here to increase our taqwa in Allah, right? These are the main intentions that every single Muslim should have, especially when they're doing... Sorry. Um, right, we are always, whenever we do an act of ibadah, our intention is always to seek the pleasure of Allah. Right, there can be other intentions, noble intentions, like for example, I want to learn so I can teach others. Alhamdulillah, right? I want to learn so that if somebody asks me, I know what to say. Alhamdulillah, right? But make sure we always purify our intention. Quick question for you, brothers and sisters When should we purify our intention? Listen to the question again. When should we purify our intention? I'll give you three choices, and I want to ask you, when should we do that? Before we do the action, during we're doing that action, after we do that action. So when should we purify our intention? Before, during, after. There could be more than one answer. Just to let you know, there can be more than one answer. Okay, so people are saying before. Somebody says throughout. Okay, alhamdulillah. All three. Before. Always. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Um, some of you got the right answer. Some of you got the right answer, which is all the time. Before, during, and after. And I'll tell you why. Some of you may know this. 
Uh, and also just to let you know, brothers and sisters, some of the stuff that I might teach you, you might already know, which is great. So it'll be like a refresher. And I think somebody said that you want to refresh. So sometimes we start something and before we start it, we have the good intention. We have a good intention, right? But then something happens and then during that action, our intention might change, right? Shaitan's was was might come into us, you know? And we might thinking of the intention shifts and it doesn't become noble anymore. Right, and then we need to recheck ourselves. We need to give a reality check to ourselves. Sometimes, throughout the action, we're staying focused, but then after, it changes, right? And then that action you did has a chance of becoming dust. Why? Because your intention changed, right? And this is why we need to always, just like some of you said already, we need to always. Um, have to recheck our intention before, uh, during, and after. Okay. The next thing I mentioned here, brothers and sisters, is that be focused. Yeah, be focused. You know, sometimes when we're watching a YouTube video, and I think this is the difference between watching a YouTube video and being part of a session like this, inshallah. You know, when we're watching a YouTube video, we, we might go into it and come out of it, meaning our focus might drift away. Right, because something happens. You might see a text message. You might see somebody calling you. Right, all of these things can happen. But imagine you're in a class right now. Physically, you're in a class right now. Let me let me tell you as well. I'm sure you know this hadith, brothers and sisters, where we are told, and I'm paraphrasing here again, that we are told in the hadith by the Prophet wasallam that we, when we are in a part of when we are in a gathering, where Allah's knowledge is being sought being sought, meaning we're seeking Allah's knowledge. There are many things that happen, but one of the things that I absolutely love is that we are told that Allah sends an angel to cover that knowledge, to cover that gathering, right? And in that gathering, what happens is the people who are in that gathering, and inshallah, we will get to that stage, they feel peace, tranquility in their heart. Right, and this happens to us. We you know when we go Jumwa Salah and we listen to the khutbah, and hopefully some of us are able to go for the khutbah. We feel that tranquility. Our iman is boom, is booming, right? So we're told that why that is because the angel is there. He's covered us with his wings, right? We're feeling that tranquility, inshallah, right? And Allah says, whoever is in that gathering, I have forgiven them. Subhanallah. So may Allah make this gathering one of those gatherings. Allah is the one, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. May Allah make this gathering where we are seeking His knowledge for His pleasure. We want our sins forgiven, yeah, and we want tranquility in our heart. Okay, so stay focused, but you need to stay focused. <laughs> you need to stay focused, my brothers and sisters. Okay, just for this one hour. I might go over one hour because obviously this is introduction, and those who know me. I go into tangents, right? <laughs> Probably a problem for some people, but for me, it's a blessing. Alhamdulillah, that Allah inspires me to talk about something else, which is still beneficial, inshallah, but it might not be what we're talking about on the screen. But yeah, so stay focused. Number three, ask questions, my brother and sister. Some of you already done that, and some of you are being very interactive. Allah, my body, continue to do that, please, not just for today, but for future sessions as well. Okay, and then last one I already said, which is we will try to be interactive, which we've already seen so. Okay, now, biography of Imam Nafi. Okay, now, as we know, brothers and sisters, to really know, to really uh, have respect for someone, you need to know that person, don't we? Um, a name can only do so much, right? Um, you know, people who said Imam Ibn Tahmiyyah, Imam Ibn Qayyum, uh, Imam uh, uh, Ghazali, and other Imams. You, you, you thought of those names because you know those people somehow, right? You learn about those peoples. So same as this, brothers and sisters, where we're going to just, you know, I, I picked some stuff up from, of course, from authentic sources, inshallah. And again, just, just a quick summary of who Imam Anavawi was, Rahimullah. Okay, so the full name, um, don't worry, I won't test you on this. And I'm sure you won't remember it after this. But his full name was? Abu, Abu Zakaria Yahya Ibn 
Sharaf al Nawawi. And that's why he's just known by the last thing. Imam al Nawawi, Rahimullah. Okay? But this is his full name. Okay, when was he born? He was born in 1233, okay, which is, of course, the Georgian calendar. Um, and he passed away in 1277. Um, and this was all in Syria. Quick question for you guys. Our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah? When was he born? Roughly. There are different dates. I'm talking about year. Which year was our Prophet Wasallam was born? Nice. 572. There's a, di there's a difference of opinion between 570, 571, 572. But it's about 570. It's about 570. 570 AD, right? Next question. When did he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and make sure, brothers and sisters, of course, I can't hear you and I can't see you. Uh, and this is a tangent again. Whenever you hear the name of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, make sure you say it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we know the hadith where we are told by the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I'm paraphrasing here, that whoever does not sense blessings upon him, he or she is the, the, the la'na is upon him or her. May Allah, may Allah forgive us. There's a hadith, I don't want to get into it. Jibreel alayhi salam came, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam was on the member. And one of the things, they both of them, Jibreel alayhi salam and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi salam, sent curses, was, one of the things was, anyone who hears the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam and doesn't say sallallahu alayhi salam. So make sure you keep saying that, even though I can't hear you, but Allah is watching you. Okay, so, my question was, when was he born? 575, 72. When did he pass away? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When did he pass away? When did he pass away? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 632. Okay, another question then. How long did he live? How long did he live? Which will hopefully help you with answering the first, the second question. And hopefully other people can answer as well. If you know the answer, look, hype it up. This is an ibadah. This is an ibadah. Show Allah how much you know his prophet. Yes, 63, 63, 63, 63. I'm getting a lot of answers. Alhamdulillah. Okay, next question. Which two other sahabi also passed away 63 years old? That we know of. Like two famous sahabi. That also passed away at 63 years of age. And this is just a quick pop quiz, you know, just for us to see for ourselves if we know our deen, you know, the basics as well. So which two other sahabi, radiyallahu anhum, also passed away at the age of 63? Abu Bakr and Umar, radiyallahu anhum, definitely, yeah, definitely. So again, this is the, there's always hikmah behind everything that Allah has done. So this is just a tangent to see how much we know our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Okay, good. Back to Imam al-Nabawi. Okay, the fiqh that he taught was the Shahfi mother? Question back to you. Which I had to do this. I had to do this. In Islam, the Sunni Islam, right? The people of the Sunnah, okay? There are four, as you know, school of thoughts. Yeah, four school of thoughts that is like the classical school of thoughts that is basically known around the world. Now, my question to you is, what are the four school of thoughts? Shafi is one of them, which was the, which was taught by Imam Ash. Ah, somebody had it ready. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, somebody knew I was going to ask that question. Allah barik. Yes, and the first one was Imam Abu Hanifa, so Hanafi, and that is probably mostly predominant in the South Asian side. Um, and then yeah, Shafi, Maliki, and Imam Ibn Hanbal, which is Han Hanbali. Um, let me ask you another question. This is again a tangent. As a Muslim, as a Muslim, who are we meant to follow? Which madhab are we meant? I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not here to astaghfirullah, you know, pinpoint any mother being wrong or right. Not, never. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, hundred percent, hundred percent. And if you don't know this, brothers and sisters, because there's a lot of people that get into this madhab thing. And when I started learning, I looked into this as well. Um, and I looked at, you know, which one should I follow? But I eventually got to the teaching of this, which again, I'm, I'm not sure who Na is, but you're right. All four of these giants 
right? I'm talking about the four imams. All four, they said something categorically. And again, I'm paraphrasing it, which is follow their fatwas, follow their rulings until the point comes where, where they, if there's a hadith which goes against their ruling, they said put away their ruling upon. Because the first thing is the Quran and the Sunnah, right? So they were very, very clear about this, right? That if there's something, if there's a, if they find if anybody finds a hadith which goes against their ruling, their ruling does not stand anymore because the hadith is higher. If the Rasul said it, that's it. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, going back to the topic now. So the fiqh of uh, Imam al nawawi was Shafi. Was Shafi. Okay. Now, during his time, when you know when he was born, what what were the Muslim lands like? Um, so, if you go back, when when was he born? Around the twelfth, you know, twelve thirty three A.D. right to twelve seventy seven. Around that time. So again, this is just a quick summary. Uh, but basically, Jerusalem. So Jerusalem had been reconquered by the Crusaders. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Jerusalem, Al-Aqsa, to be controlled by Muslims again. Amin Ya Rab, Amin Ya Rab, Amin Ya Rab. So Jerusalem at that time, at the time of uh, Imam al uh, Imam, Imam al Nawawi, I, I said Shafi because he's Shafi, uh, uh, Jerusalem had been reconquered by the Crusaders. Baghdad, subhanAllah, was barbarically conquered by the Mongols. Um, and I'm sure those who study history, they will know the, the way the Mongols killed people. They killed more than half a million Muslims and the books were destroyed. I'm sure those who know this, and if you don't know, you know, uh, Islam, you know, before Imam al nawawi of course, before his time, Baghdad was like a university of all universities, to be honest, because there were books upon books of knowledge, not just Islamic knowledge, but also worldly knowledge. Because remember, brothers and sisters, sometimes as Muslims, we try to think as if, you know, being a Muslim, it's like you have the Islamic teachings, but that's what they say, you have the Islamic learning, and then you have the dunya learning. But, but, but that's not right, because in Islam, in Islam, everything comes together, right? These imams, they, they learned about things like, you know, astronomy. They learn about biology. They learn about geography. They learn about history. They learn about maths. They learn about language. Right? So if anybody says to you, oh, you know, religion takes you away from learning about things that will benefit, you know, people. No, I'm sorry. Islam is not that. Islam is a holistic religion. Not just a religion. Islam is a way of life. We know this. But sometimes we, we we get into this mind frame where we think, you know, Islam is just about the salah, the fasting, reading Quran, giving charity, being... It, that's right. That's right. But then there's this side as well where Islam is also about seeking knowledge and practicing itself. Exactly. The Quran itself is a full... So, I remember uh, uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Zakir Naik, Dr. Zakir Naik, he always said, you know, the Quran is not a book of science, it's the book of signs, S-I-G-N-S, right? And within that, of course, if anything that goes with science, Alhamdulillah, right? So again, you know, uh, uh, going back to the, to the biography, um, Imam al nawawi came when, you know, it was a difficult situation, just look at it. Right, our main, you know, one of our main lands, Jerusalem, was under the Crusaders, the Christian Crusaders. You know, Baghdad again, another prominent land for Muslims because of the knowledge base that it had established itself as. Right, it was under Mongols. Right, so it was a tough time. It was a tough time. Dynasties, right. The Ayyubid dynasty went towards the Mamluk dynasty. I'm just giving you here because just to let you know, the, where, you know the 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 picture, the mind frame, or, or the background 
of when, what was the situation like at the time of Imam al nawawi Okay, moving on. But on the outer lands, towards the south and the east, the expansion of Islam in places like Mali and Indonesia was happening, similar to today's time. So, and this, this is, subhanAllah, and I'm sure you've noticed this as well. This is the... Um, the 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 example of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala where you might see where certain in certain lands which we call the Muslim lands that the practice of Islam might be going down, but then in other lands which are supposed to be non-Muslim lands, the practice of Islam is going up. Now, question to you. Do you feel, and I'm not, again, I'm not stereotyping and we shouldn't do that, but just a feeling here. Do you feel this is happening in today's times as well in certain parts? I'm not going to label, make sure don't label anyone, brothers and sisters, you know, labeling is not part of Islam. You know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never stereotyped anyone. You know, we, even as Muslims, sometimes we Oh, the Jews are like this. Oh, the Christians are like this. The atheists are like this. There are good and bad people in everyone. My question to you is, do you feel that the, 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 the orthodox, the correct Islamic practice at times is better in non-Muslim lands compared to Muslim lands? What do you think? Because that's what was happening in, in Imam al nawawis time, that the Islam was spreading and then in Muslim lands, it was difficult to practice Islam. And that's the problem here. You know, Jerusalem and Baghdad were the Muslim lands. And it was difficult to practice. Right? And then that's why Muslims started to spread. So you're saying yes, 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 yes as well. Which is, some people might say that's a sad thing. But some people might say, well, you know, this is the window of opportunity. Right? You know, the reverts, people who accept Islam. SubhanAllah, we always say this that they practice Islam better than, you know, those who are born Muslim, meaning who have, who, who, look, we're all born Muslims. You know that term born Muslim? We're all born Muslims. We all know this. The Prophet Sallallahu said that every single person is born as a Muslim, right? So this, 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 this term born Muslim need to be very careful. Um, but basically, if you say, you know, those who are born to Muslim families, that's fine. That's the better term. Those who are born to Muslim families, that's fine, right? Um, they, um, you know, compare them to the revert Muslims. Most of the time, those revert Muslim brothers says, not that they don't have challenges, they also have challenges. And some of them, obviously, of course, you know, I see, you know I'm, in, I'm in interaction with some of them on a regular basis. Some of them do leave Islam as well because they never really tasted Iman. And may Allah allow us always to taste Iman. Uh, but yes, I say, as I said, I'm not saying all lands, astaghfirullah, uh, I'm just saying some lands, you know, in, in non-Muslim, and, and, I'm, and I'm not even talking about just Islamic practice. I'm talking about even the principles of Islam. The principles of Islam are sometimes or are adopted by non-Muslims better than Muslims. Right? Um, that's it, that's it, brother. It's not, it's not Muslim. Yeah. So, and you feel, I mean, I'm living in the UK, Right? And sometimes I look at, you know, the policies. I'm not saying, of course, they're perfect. May Allah guide everyone. Without la ilaha illallah, everything else is losing, right? So that's 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 hundred percent. Nothing weighs higher than la ilaha illallah, right? Do not ever forget that, brothers and sisters, right? You know, we all have faults. We all might be falling short in different places, even our government. But what I'm saying is that there's certain practices which are happening in non-Muslim lands, which we feel as Muslims should be happening in Muslim lands, right? Like, for example, the care of the elderly, the care of the weak, the care of the disabled, right? Um, the, 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 and there's so many other things as well. But, um, sorry, I'm going on a tangent here. Again, this is just about looking at the last line. I'll go back to the topic again, which is that, look, Imam al nawawi came at a time where we, it, it's similar to our time to a certain extent, not exactly the same, but to a certain extent. All right, let's continue now. Okay, childhood, childhood, childhood. How many of us remember our childhood? <laughs> I don't remember much of mine, subhanAllah. Um, but yeah, so as a child, Imam al nawawi it wasn't really a playing type, right? As you can see there, 
he didn't really like playing around. Um, he was a man, Rahimullah, who always observed, contemplated, pondered, thought about things, right? He was a deep thinker, right? Um, and you know, you know, whenever, even, subhanAllah, this thing here, it's, you know, the people who, you, who ponder and reflect at an early age, you know Allah has blessed them with something else, right? Because everything happens by Allah's blessings, right? So whenever we read about pretty much, pretty much any of these giant imams, right? They will be people or even the Sahaba or even the prophets, alayhi salatu was salam. Most of them, right? If not all of them, they were people from a young age. They didn't like to play around. Like they didn't like to waste time, subhanAllah. They were people who always looked at things, looked at the skies, looked at, you know, things around us because this is what Allah is telling us to do, right? This is what Allah is telling us to do in the Quran, that reflect, ponder. And it's something that, sadly speaking, especially people in Hong Kong, all we see when we look up are what? Buildings. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Whenever we're walking, we just see, you know, streets and People, people are still good to look at as well in, in terms of reflecting. But, you know, this observation and contemplation and reflection and looking at people and looking at the animals, this is something we're pushed to do. But sadly speaking, not many of us do that, right? So please, brothers and sisters, you know, from time to time. Now, you don't have to go to, I don't know, you know, the desert to do this. Or you don't have to do that. Just, you know, when you go out, just look at the sky and just think, look at the clouds, look at the sunset, look at the sunrise, look at the moon, look at the tree, whatever it might be. And just take a few moments and just reflect, just reflect about how that leaf is growing or how that ant is moving. Or when you open up, subhanAllah, I do that sometimes, when you open up an orange and you look at the beauty inside. Right, the protection. So while I'm getting goosebumps as I'm saying this, and you open up that slice and you see the juice inside. I'm sure most of you want to have an orange now. <laughs> but this is this is what contemplation is about, brothers and sisters. You know, Allah has given us signs around us. Look at your hands, look at your lungs. Look, we don't do enough of this. I feel, um, which is reflecting. But anyway, go back to Imam Al Nawawi. He was someone who regularly did that, who regularly wanted to contemplate, observed, and looked around. Now, something happened when he was just seven years old, which was on the 27th night, he saw some light coming into the house, and he woke up the family. Now, this, of course, some scholars have said that it could be, Allah knows best, a, 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 a sign um, for the the people in that village or in that in that area or even that family that there's a special person in that house right now, you know the the reality is brothers and sisters that and when we look at the history when we look at the history of our imams our great imams, from pretty much from a young age something special things started happening to them, right and these were all signs, these were all signs to show, you know there's a, there's there's a there's there's goodness coming up, right. And this is the beauty of uh, Allah's the, the deen as well. You know, from time to time, even of course, the passing of the Prophet Wasallam, even after that, from time to time, Allah sends people that tries their best to bring people back to the original teachings, right? We know, of course, the Rasul Wasallam is the end, right? Khatam al Nabawiyah, right? He's the seal of the prophethood. There's no new prophet going to come after him. Yes, Isa alayhi salam is going to come, but he's not going to come with a new you know, guidelines or new book. He's going to come and he's going to become part of the ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Just another tangent of somebody says to you, well, your religion says that Isa, Jesus, is going to come back. So isn't he supposed to be the last prophet? Why do you say Muhammad is the last prophet? So this is how you can just say to them, look, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the last prophet. Because number one, Allah has said so. Number two, it's mentioned by him, him he himself as well, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Isa alayhi salam is going to come back because two things. He has an 
let me ask you actually, I've been talking too much and this is not connected to this topic, but I'm going to do this brothers and sisters. And I hope you don't mind. If you, if you mind, just let me know if not here, but privately, I will go into tangents. Okay. I'm at, what I'm asking you here is, um, what are the two main reasons that Isa, Isa alayhi salam is going to come back? I hope you're still there. <laughs> I can't see you and I can't hear you, of course. This is a difference between teaching face-to-face -face and teaching online. Uh, to bring back Islamic practices and to kill the Dajjal. Okay. To fight the anti-Christ -the Dajjal. Okay. Yeah. One of them is correct. One of them is correct. Uh, well, I mean, the second one is also correct as well, to bring back. One of the main reasons, to be honest, is the fact that Isa alayhi salam hasn't tasted death. That's it. He's not died yet. He's not died yet. That's the reason why he has to come back. Right? He had because whatever Allah says is the haq. There's no contradiction, the Allah, whatever Allah says. And Allah has said what? Every single soul, not body, soul will taste death. Right? And the soul of Isa alayhi salam has not tasted death yet. So he has to come back. But yes, what other things you've said, brothers and sisters, is correct as well, right? The second main reason is that the battle between him and the Jal. And of course, he's going to be bringing peace back into the lands. But also the fact that he is going to be part of the Ummah of the Prophet wasallam. And how do we know that? What is the teaching that we have that, that shows that he is going to be part of the Ummah of the Prophet وسلم, and not going to be teaching a new scripture. What's the thing that he's going to do? What is the thing that Isa is going to do to show that he is part of the Ummah of the Prophet وسلم, and not teaching something new? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Pray behind an imam. Yes, yes. Right? He's going to be praying behind Imam Mehdi. Imam Mehdi. Right? Long story about him, but he's obviously he's going to be a righteous person. Um, and, you know, Isa is going to pray behind him. But the, the point is that, that's the point is going to be part of the Imam of the Prophet ﷺ. Okay, going back to Imam al Um, I really hope, and again, just let me know, brothers and sisters, are you okay? with me going on these tangents and stuff. Again, this is all part of knowledge. This is all part of refreshing our knowledge as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you just want me to focus on this only, let me know, even though it'll be difficult for me. That's fine. Okay, great. Um, okay, so back to the thing. Uh, we're okay. Alhamdulillah. Uh, as long as I get two answers, I'm happy. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, brothers and sisters. Okay, so back to the story of uh, Imam al-Nawi. So yeah, seven years old, something like this happens. Okay. Now, eight years old, eight years old, what happened? Um, he was teased and he was taunted by other boys, okay? He was teased and taunted by other boys, okay? Um, and, oops, sorry about that. Um, and he started crying. And someone asked him, is asked him why he doesn't play. And the reason why he was being teased and taunted was because as I said already in the beginning, that he was a child, he didn't like to play about, right? But of course, think about during that time, he couldn't just stay in a room, he had to come out and contemplate. So he used to come out and just sit somewhere and just look around, and, but he wouldn't play. The kids would be playing of his age, but he wouldn't want to play. And because of that, as some kids are, <laughs> they're like guide us all, they would bully him. Basically, that's bullying, isn't it? Just because you're not going to play, so we're going to bully you, right? You know, you think you're this, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, he used to cry. He's eight years old, you know, at that time. But there's something profound. There's something profound that he said at eight years old, brothers, which I'm going to show you in a bit. But just think about it. He's eight years old. And someone asked him why he doesn't play. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong in play, right? Uh, 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 um. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he played, he played with Aisha radhiyallahu anha, right? He raced with her, 
right? Aisha Radhyanna, as you know, you, you know, there was a, 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 a there's a difference of opinion. Some people say there was a wrestling happening. Some people say there was like a, a, a show or something. But anyway, she stood and wanted to see the show. The Prophet Sallallahu was next to her, right? Did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, no, let's go, let's go. This is the waste of time. No, he stood there, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aisha Radhyanna have watched and we know the story. And that story has a lot of things. One of the things is this. But another thing is about the that subhanallah about the romantic side of the Prophet, right? That he stood there. He stood there for Aisha radiallah. Right? And Aisha radiallah had her, you know, her head on the blessed shoulder of the Prophet. And he was watching, right? Again, that that's a different story. But the point here is that um there's nothing wrong in you know playing as long as there's a balance, right? Number one. Number two, there's nothing haram in that playing, right? Um, anyway, somebody asked Imam al Navawi why he doesn't play. So let's see what he says. SubhanAllah. But it wasn't for this that we were created. SubhanAllah. Whenever I read this, it gives me goosebumps. An eight-year-old boy is saying this about not playing. But it wasn't for this. It wasn't for play. We were not created for play. And I mean, he was looking at play from a very, you know, um, bigger picture. As Allah tells us in the Quran, that this life is not for just amusement, right? This life is not just for play, right? There's a purpose for this life. There's a higher reason why Allah has given us a soul. Allah has given us time. Allah has given us ability, the intellect, right? A beating heart, right? There's a bigger reason for this. It's not just to keep entertaining ourselves, right? You know what? And the, the quicker we realize this, the better it will be for us, right? And the, But for people like, of course, Imam al we at eight years old, he realized this. That we were not created to just play around. We were created for a higher purpose. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. We've got five minutes left, brothers and sisters. And this is, I, I should have said this in the beginning as well. This series, I will take my time because I did the same thing when I did on face to face as well. You know, today we might not even go to the first hadith, right? But the purpose of this is to seek knowledge. And I'm sure you are seeking knowledge, right? And I'm going to try to stick to the timing I have said, which is, you know, 12 to 1. Sorry, 7 to 8 for you guys. 12 to 1 for me. Um, normally in my sessions, I end up going over time. But this series is a bit more flexible, which is even if I'm not finished, I can continue on where I left off, right? So I, I hope you're okay with that. Okay, so going back to this last five minutes, right? Now, because of this answer and because of other things that were happening, the father of Imam al Nawawi was advised by people around him, the elders especially, that the father needs to support the learning of Imam al Nawawi. Subhanallah. And you know, just to bring back to us, those who are parents, those who are fathers and mothers, you know, sometimes we see something in which our child is more passionate towards. You know, every single one of us, and I'm sure that includes me, we want our child to become the next doctor, the next engineer. These are the top two ones that for Desi family, that's the answer, right? But there, there's been a shift, alhamdulillah. You know, a lot of the young parents as well, they are more catering towards, okay, you know what? What is your passion in? Because look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, and this is a mercy, he's made us different, Right? Not every single one of us can become a doctor. <laughs> Not every single one of us can become a teacher. Not every single one of us can go and do a, you know, a building job, right? No, and, and other jobs as well. Every job, as long as it's providing halal risk, is blessed, right? But it's so important that when we see our child, you know, uh, excelling, and that's what it is, excelling in something which is halal, which is halal, that we should be parents to think, okay, you know what? How can I give him or her the right kind of support so that he or she can continue to excel? Because the passion is there. You know, when you have a passion in something, 
th th there's two type of people, and this could be in so many different walks of life. This could, be, this could be in your work as well, or your studies. When you have a passion in something, that work, that study, becomes like a hobby, right? You find pleasure in that. But when you don't have a passion in something, and you're going through that curriculum, you're going through that work every day, you're going to your university, but you're not really enjoying it, it's becoming a burden for you then there's a higher chance this is going to go down eventually. And you will think back and think, ah, oh, I should have done what I was passionate about. Him. Right? So, Imam al father ended up supporting him. Alhamdulillah. And again, this is all from the blessings of Allah. Right? Allah told the people to tell the father and the father listened to the people. Sometimes as parents, our biggest issue is we don't listen. Right? We think we know everything ourselves, and we do, of course, to a certain extent, but always listen to other people's opinions. Ask Allah for Hidayah to make you do the steps which is best for your children. Okay. Now, Quran, no surprise, absolute no surprise, that an Imam of his stature, he was connected to the Quran. So he became he did his hif. In, in, in Nawa, Nawa is a place that, you know, he grew, like I said, he was born in Nawa. And that's why, you know, a lot of people, they were known as Nawawi, right? Because that, that's where the, 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 the town he was born in. Now, he did his hift in Nawa before puberty. Allah Mubarak. And again, subhanAllah, it shouldn't come as a surprise, should it? Okay. Uh, I want to see if I can hopefully finish this. I, is everybody okay for another five minutes? What I want to do is I want to finish off the biography so the next time, next Saturday, when we start, we start with the first hadith. So is everybody okay for another five minutes or so? Is that okay, everyone? Okay, yes, 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 yes. Okay, alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair. Okay, so Damascus. Imam al nawawi he moved to Damascus from Nawa. Okay, why? So he did hijra. This is called hijra, right? He did hijra. Well, the father did hijrah for him, with him. But what was the purpose? What was the intention? Again, going back to the intention. It was to gain further knowledge, right? Because the father realized that, look, this is a boy who's hungry for knowledge, who wants more knowledge, right? And he thought that if he, if he stays in Nawa, he wouldn't be able to live to his full potential, you know? And a lot of people do this in different walks of life. Right? Some people move from country to country because they realize, you know what, I'm talking about today's times, don't we do that? We do. We realize, you know what, that country has better university in the subject I want to learn. And if Allah blesses you, you're able to go, you want to do it. Right? So, Imam al nawawi he moved to Damascus to increase his knowledge base. Right? Books. Books. And you know what? These giants, the one... <laughs> Their, their, their legacy, their legacy are their books, are their teachings. Their sadaqa jariya, right? Their sadaqa jariya, the knowledge that they have spread and they continue to benefit. Look, you know, Imam al Nawawi is in his grave right now. May Allah raise his status, but we're talking about him. You're in Hong Kong, I'm in the UK, and we're talking about a man who lived in Syria, who grew up in Syria. But this is from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? This is the impact people can leave in their short space of time, right? So books. Uh, Imam al nawawi at 18 years old, he authored, meaning he wrote numerous, many lengthy works ranging from hadith. And this is why, you know, he's known for his hadith, but also talking about theology, right? Aqidah. Theology is more towards the Aqidah. Biography. So that's more towards history. And jurisprudence, which is the fiqh, which is the fiqh, right? So in Islam, there are two main topics that we have when it comes to learning. One is the aqidah side of it, which is a theology, the belief, and that's the most important thing, right? If you don't have the right aqidah, nothing else matters but the sisters. And never underestimate, never belittle, never think learning about aqidah is like a small thing. Just because you say la ilaha illallah, don't think that's enough. No, brothers and sisters, no. I know this and everybody who seeks knowledge know this. The importance of, cert, of, of checking your aqidah is right is so important. Because the person 
who has the right right aqida, meaning right belief system of Allah, tawheed, understanding tawheed, understanding shirk, right, and everything else that comes with it. If you have the right aqida, you pass away on the right aqida, but you have other sins on your on your on your on your uh, on your book. The right that person compared to someone who pass away with a corrupt aqida. I'm talking about a Muslim. I'm not even talking about non-Muslims here. I'm talking about a Muslim here who pass away with a with, with a corrupt aqida. I'm not going to say wrong aqida. I want to say corrupt aqida. But he or she had many other good. He had more good deeds than this person in terms of, for example, sadaqah. In terms of fasting, salah, the ibadah that we know. Who do you think is going to be in a better off situation on the Yom al -Qiyama? Person A or person B? Let me ask you. So person A has the right Akida, right? He looked into it, he searched, he checked the sources, he made sure he had the, he learned about his Akida and he corrected it if it was wrong, but he didn't really do that many good deeds because of different reasons. This person, person B, he has a corrupt Akida, right? But he did many good deeds, right? Meaning in terms of the Ibadah and stuff like that. Who do you think is in a better situation on Yom Al-Qiyamah? Person A, 100%, 100%, right? Because there's nothing more important than knowing who your Allah is. Right? Uh, and again, I'm talking about tangents here. The Prophet ﷺ, you know, before the revelation came for Salah, for all of these things, the first, some people would say seven years, or some people say ten years. That period was all about what? Tawheed, Tawheed, Tawheed. Right? Salah came later, fasting, it was about Tawheed. So again, the books of Imam al nawawi was talking about theology first. Biography and jurisprudence is fiqh. So that's the second topic, fiqh. Fiqh is things like, you know, which doesn't really always affect your Akidah, but it's it's important to know. Like, for example, there's jurisprudence about Salah. What are certain things that can you know, um, corrupt your salah. There's fiqh on fasting. There's fiqh on marriage. There's, so jurisprudence is about rulings on certain to on, on the different topics that we have. I hope that's clear. Okay. Um, on average, Imam al-Nawawi, um, he wrote 40 pages a day. Subhanallah. Now these are, length, as I said already, lengthy pages. But he's a man of knowledge. Subhanallah. You know, Allah blessed him. And, and we ask Allah to bless us as well, that he keep make us people of knowledge as well. So he wrote on average 40 pages a day. Now, what were, the, what were the quality traits, characteristics, personality, and actions of Imam al nawawi um, Of course, there were many things which I told you about already. Quran, you know, he was the hifth of the Quran. Um, he wrote books, so he's a knowledgeable person. But other than that also, he did voluntary fasting and salah as well, right? So again, this is, uh, it, 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 he didn't, look, he didn't think that, you know, I'll just keep to the, compulsory ibadah about the salah and fasting because I want to spend my time on just knowledge. He tried his best to make sure he gave um, uh, the level to different ibadah that we are encouraged to do. Okay? So, another thing, and this, this was something quite interesting which I saw, which was, he wouldn't eat from public gardens, fearing rights, so father would send him food. Okay? Sorry about that. Right? Um, he wouldn't eat from public gardens because he felt, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, the, the, the mindset of these people. He felt that he wasn't, he didn't deserve to get food from the public gardens, like, you know, like charity, basically. And so the father would send him the food, right? For us, subhanAllah, wherever you see free stuff, let's go, people. <laughs> It doesn't even matter if we deserve it or not. Let's go. We want that free stuff. <laughs> Subhanallah. May Allah make us people of taqwa. Okay. Um, he he conducted 12 classes a day of classes. Subhanallah. We we struggle with one. May Allah bless us. Okay. Uh, last one. I hope you're okay. Just, I think this is the last slide on biography. Okay. Subhanallah. This is, look at this. His guests couldn't find space to sit due to what? Books. <laughs> right, he used to have books everywhere. He was like he, people would say he was flooded with books. He was flooded with books, right? And he had books everywhere, so people would find it struggle to sit. 
All right. He used to sharpen the pencil when guests are there. Okay. Not wasting time seeking knowledge. Right. Because as you've seen, he's writing 40 pages a day. So the man needs to, you know, needs a sharp pencil. He didn't have a computer at that time. Right. So the, and that's when you used to, subhanAllah, those were different times. So anyway. Um, he didn't sleep for two years lying down, meaning that whenever he used to sleep, it was more like just sitting down and he would just nod off, right? And then whenever he used to wake up, but lying down, meaning on a bed. Why? His hunger towards seeking knowledge was just next level, next level. Um, okay, this one as well is there, part of his action. He didn't get married. He didn't get married. Why? Because he feared, subhanAllah, how many of us don't get married or don't look to get married because of this thing? He feared not being able to fulfill the rights of his wife. Well, I can talk a lot about this, you know, but we don't have time. But I hope this is just a quick indication. The importance he felt was on marriage because his passion was toward too much towards knowledge seeking. He felt he wouldn't be able to balance himself, right? Um, but that still doesn't, uh, exclude us, excuse us from getting married, right? Getting married is a sunnah. So whoever is not married, please, please seek the right means to get married. May Allah allow us all uh, who are not married have righteous spouses. And those who are married, may Allah bless us. May Allah bless us, bless our marriages. I mean, Ya Rab. Okay, he stood up against oppression, subhanAllah, by the Mamluk dynasty, Khalifa, um, who feared the Imam, couldn't explain the reason. Um, couldn't explain the reason. So basically, he did it. He wasn't just a man of, um, you know, some in some religion where like the, the monks, for example, you know, they just want to stay in a place. They want to just seek knowledge, you know, reflect, contemplate. No, 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 no. This man went out as well and he spoke against oppression because this is Islam. Islam is not a selfish religion, right? Islam talks about fix yourself and fix others as, as much as you can because we're told by the Prophet wasallam that. If you see something wrong happening, what should you do? Stop it with your hand. If you cannot, stop it with your mouth. Say something against it. If you cannot, the third thing he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is don't accept it in your heart. But he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that that person has got the weakest of Iman because he's not really doing something outwardly. It's just between. But this is still good because he said it's still Iman. Okay. Um, so he was a man who enjoined the good, forbid the evil even against greedy leaders, reminding them of Yom al right? And may Allah always allow us to have people around us that remind us of Yom al You know, we have people who remind us about our salaries. We have people who remind us about, um, you know, where should we have our food, clothes, you know, stuff like that, holidays. But we need people who remind us about Yom al -Qiyama. So he was the one who was reminding the leaders about that. Okay. Uh, I just want to see, brother and sisters. I don't want to take too much time. Okay. There's one more slide, brother and sisters. I hope you're okay with that. I know I'm asking too much time. Okay. Books and writing. Now, this is something amazing. He wrote the commentary of Sahih Muslim. If you, you can see the picture there. He wrote the commentary of Sahih Muslim. Now, Sahih Muslim, as you know, uh, for, for the Muslims, after the Quran, we look at the six, uh, uh, the six books that certain scholars compiled in regards to hadith, right? The two most popular ones, of course, are Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, wrote by whom? Imam Muslim and Imam al-Bukhari, right? And Imam al-Nawawi, he wrote a commentary. He didn't write Sahih Muslim. Don't, don't mix up that, right? Sahih Muslim is wrote by Imam al-Muslim who compiled hadiths, right? Um, Imam al nawawi made a commentary, like a tafsir. I'm sure you've heard the word before, tafsir. So he wrote a tafsir of Sahih Muslim. Okay. Riyadu Salihin. Who knows this book? Riyadu Salihin, the gardens of the righteous. Who knows this book? Have you heard this book before? Riyadu Salihin is a very, very popular book. <clears throat> Exactly, yes. So it's a book, again, it's about hadith. It's basically about hadiths. But it's about how in that book, and subhanAllah, he wrote it. Imam al Nawawi wrote this book. It's about how the different hadiths have been categorized, right? Into the different topics, 
So it makes it easier. You know, as Muslims, we are we, we should always be people that makes things easier for others. Right? And that's what Imam al nawawi did. You know, Imam al-Bukhari and Imam al-Muslim, they had a different thing. They were just to basically compile the hadiths. And they had a different thing about looking at which is authentic, which is weak. But Imam al nawawi came and he looked at commentary of, the, uh, of those hadiths and putting them into the right order. Yes, correct. It's about everyday life. Okay, um, he also wrote another book called Arabain al Nawawi. Okay, as you can see there. Okay, Arabain al Nawawi, right? Which is basically the 40 Hadith of Imam al Nawawi. And I was saying this in the beginning of the of this session, sister, brothers and sisters. In the Juma Khutbah I went yesterday, the Imam, I don't know him, he talked about Imam al Nawawi 40 Hadith. And when I heard him, I had goosebumps. I was like, Ya Allah. Tomorrow, meaning today, I'm going to be talking about that, right? And yesterday, Imam on the, on the member, he said, you know, he's talking about different Imams, and he said, oh, Imam al Nawawi, his book, 40 Hadith, is taught in the universities. And I just looked at him. I was like, ya Allah. And then, they, they, these moments, we all get them from, as long as we're in the path of good brothers and sisters, Allah will inspire you with these goosebumps moments. And you're like, Allah is watching me. Allah knows, you know, and we all need those moments. Okay, the death of Imam al Nawawi, um, he left tremendous work left behind after 45 years, right? As you can see, subhanAllah, he left, he didn't leave any mark on the graves because he wanted his grave to be anonymous. He didn't want his grave to be a, like, become a shrine. He didn't want his grave to be a place where people come to get barakah. May Allah protect us. Uh, he didn't want the place people to come to make dua. No, no, no. He just wanted, he left his praise as. Uh, no marks because he wanted people to stay away from shirk. As we know, grave worship is completely forbidden. Three major characteristics. Number one, level of scholarship. Of course, his scholarship, as we've seen from the age of seven to eight and onwards. Level of aestheticism, meaning the the the, the passion, level of passion and searching knowledge, right? And of course, enjoining the good and forbidding evil. Okay, this was his legacy i'm going to stop here now brothers and sisters i hope um i'm sorry that i took 15 more minutes before you go brothers and sisters please do not go right now i want every single person there's about nine people here we started with 11 we're 10 here and i want i'm going to do this every single time and this is part of my teaching style i want every single person please and i hope this is the case can you please type one thing that you learned today can you please type, every single person, please type one thing that you learned from today's one-hour session. I hope you learned something. It might be something new, hopefully, or it might be something that refresh your mind and you felt, you know, subhanAllah. Okay, Sister Amna, about why Isa alayhi salam has to come back. Okay, alhamdulillah. Not connected to Imam al-Nawi, but alhamdulillah. Okay, I've got Sister Amna. Others, please. Every single person needs to say something, please. And I hope I'm not being too compulsive, too forceful. It's just a way to ponder. Look, when you, when you ask these questions, and do this with your children as well, brothers and sisters. You know, when your child comes from an Islamic class, ask them, what did you learn? Okay, uh, Sister Raina. I'm sorry if I say the name wrong. Or I'm brother, it says, Raina says, they don't know who Imam Anavawi was, but today learned a lot about his life. Alhamdulillah. Okay, great. So you learned about Imam Anavawi. Good. Brother Hashim, blessings of the Quran. Anything Quran touches, blessing it. Definitely. This is our miracle. This is our miracle, isn't it? Jazakallah khair. Brother Shaquille, know more about the childhood of Imam al 100%. When I looked into this, when I wanted to do this series, I learned the same thing. You know, what, what happened at seven years old, eight years old, when he said, this is not what we are created for. Subhanallah. Okay, uh, Rana. I think it's Brother Rana. Uh, I learned about Imam al I never knew about until today. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Fantastic. I didn't know Imam al wrote a commentary on Sayyid Muslim. Fantastic, Sister Jenny. So there you go. You learn something new again. That when, next time, when you see the hadith, you know, it says Sahih Muslim, you can think about, ah, Imam al has a commentary on him. Right? So this is this is the beauty of knowledge. All right? Um, I think everybody has replied. Uh, Brother Abbas, have you said something yet? I'm sorry I'm picking on... Hopefully you don't think I'm picking on you guys. <laughs> Sister Saliha, I was going to ask you as well. Uh, be more observing and contemplative. Jazakallah khair, definitely. 
you know, uh, look around you, look at yourself, look at your children even, look at just around yourself, even when you're doing dhikr, right? Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Also, brothers and sisters, take your time in your dhikr. Don't be people who think, subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. Don't be that time. Allah knows. You're wasting your time, to be honest. You're not saying, subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. You're not even saying it properly, brothers and sisters. Just take your time. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Take your time, brothers and sisters. And when you're doing that, it will give you a chance to contemplate as well. Okay, sister uh, Aya, actually learn about him just now. Okay, fantastic. So, brothers and sisters, again, I hope you know you found this uh, one hour beneficial. Yeah, just if you can, it's not to brag me, astaghfirullah, it's just to see if the session was beneficial to you. So, can I just see some answers? Did, did, you, did, did you find this one hour beneficial? From next time, as you can see, we're going to start with the first hadith. But just now, you've got, a, you've got a setting now. You know who this man is. And you'll realize what made him choose these 40 hadiths, right? Because there's so many hadiths. But Imam al Nawawi he chose 40 hadiths. So can I just ask, this one hour, one hour 15, was it beneficial for you guys? Okay, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless us. May Allah accept it from us. May Allah keep us always on the path of, of knowledge. Alhamdulillah. Uh, please encourage others to come as well. Um, I'm going to put a message in the group again that, you know, those who missed out, that they need to take advantage of this. Again, for me, I refresh my knowledge. I refresh my connection with uh, with the deen of Allah. And, you know, like I said, I had a couple of goosebumps moments as well. Alhamdulillah. So, again, jazakallah khair. Um, inshallah, inshallah. I hope to see all of you next Saturday as well. I mean, ya Rabb. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh